Good morning, everyone. It's actually getting quite late here in Hong Kong, but still, good morning. My name is Provice Ng. Just to get the confusing pronunciation out of the way, today I'll be discussing with you on means to disrupt the information economy of architecture with Satoshi's vision. More specifically, how can blockchain applications in building information modeling BEAM help to support a circular economy inclusive to local, independent, and small-scale actors, leases. Quite a long title, huh? So first, I shall provide you with a definition of information economy. So an information economy is where the productivity of actors in a network is dependent on the capacity to efficiently create, realize, accumulate, and circulate knowledge-based information. While architecture has always been an economy that relies on information exchange, information economics is different in that it looks at the information system as a whole and emphasis on the collection and distribution of relevant information at the appropriate time. Along these lines, there has been an increasing amount of research and attempts to create a common data environment in order to achieve such form of a multi-access self-organizational system within architectural production. Nonetheless, the annual productivity growth of the building industry has only increased 1% over the past 20 years, but accounts for 13% of the world's GDP. This implies that we're increasing input with almost no growth in output, rendering the industry low in sustainability. This is a hindrance to the development of circular economies, so when flows within a supply chain are dry, values would not be effectively circulated and redistributed in the economic structure. This leads to poor conservation and greater consumption of resources. A factor of concern is fragmentation. Actors within a building industry generally work in silos, which results in high operational costs and low productivity growth. So this research addresses three causes of fragmentation. First, information asymmetry. Design disciplines rely on transacting intellectual properties, IPs. In the absence of a secured yet transparent way to circulate IP, the architectural market is being established on information asymmetry. Second, proprietary incompatibility. Technologies are being designed to work in silos, causing output components from data format to plastic types to be incompatible and take extra energy to recycle. Third, financial clique. Building projects often require sizable upfront capitals, and complex contracts are generally trusted to larger international actors with greater financial resources. This results in the marginalization of leases such as small-medium enterprises, designer collectives, and self-employed architects, much like myself. So the impeded flow of information, work, and cash to leases limits the distribution of resources, resulting in a small click economy instead of a circular economy. So the question is, how can blockchain applications help us in tackling these issues? First, let's take a look at what is blockchain. So in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto proposed a peer-to-peer -peer transaction system secured with timestamp functions, Bitcoin. It aimed at improving the autonomy of information transactions within a decentralized network to eliminate the time and resources needed for institutional authentication and the backend mechanism to which is blockchain. And its qualities as a distributed ledger is perfect to be coupled with beam systems to tackle fragmentation both on a technical and on a social economic level. Blockchain's shared data layer within its application stack can help to anchor digital assets to facilitate an immutable common data environment, a CDE, for beam, so it is technically a good marriage for the purposes of information transfer. On the other hand, blockchain's universal communication and control protocols can help the stacking of multiple applications and API units into Beam software packages on demand. So this facilitates a means for Beam systems to freely integrate with crowdsourced efforts. This has further applications in architecture where decision making and negotiation processes within design and contractual matter can be facilitated by a diverse, integratable app stack. 
meaning we may begin to design a range of compatible interfaces as access portals for the specific needs of different users to enable real-time communication amongst a scattered chain of designers, contractors, suppliers, developers, clients, and even average citizens. Also, it enables a true building information modeling system, not just a building information modeling software. This basically describes an agency's method as first coined by the famous mathematician John Nash, where multiple parties can simply accept the agencies of another to accomplish larger, more complex tasks that each party otherwise could not have achieved on their own, so facilitating cooperative games. There are various blockchain BIM initiatives. Nonetheless, most of them are not aiming for a BIM system that facilitates an agency's method, but rather proprietary BIM softwares. This is an obstacle towards creating an inclusive multi-access system. Unfortunately, for the limited time of this presentation, I cannot go deep into the case studies, but I have summed up a few points on the reasons why they may be facing challenges in democratizing their softwares to leases. First, scalability, which is the speed capacity for a network to handle a growing amount of transactions. So such issues within a decentralized network contribute to high operational costs and significant transaction fees at each exchange. Also, if crowdsourced or low-cap versions are not available, the proprietary cost itself may already make most blockchain BIM products unaffordable to leases. Second, enforceability, which occurs when the functioning of virtual and physical components are not in sync. So some of these initiatives are incorporating Internet of Things or radio frequency identification systems to ensure enforceability. But for leases, who are mostly involved in smaller construction projects, the economic incentive to employ such systems is insufficient. So there has to be ways in which enforceability is designed into the decentralized network structure itself. It can just be something as simple as translating consensus mechanism to architecture, so incorporating collaborative filtering, collective rating, etc., which is basically a user end version of proof of work authentication, a proof of architectural work. This is not so different to what search engines like Google are doing for information indexing, which is basically ranking pages according to their relative importance. But a blockchain system would take this one step further, so instead of having a proprietary ranking, users can actually have control over such rankings and directly vote on works that they appreciate. An initiative which is exploring such forms of decentralized information indexing is 21E8. Last but not least, loopholes, which is an ambiguity or inadequacy in the law or set of rules. So every contract has a certain level of loopholes, but with any decentralized immutable systems like smart contracts, when everything is packed into one long and complex agreement that automates all transactions, it basically multiplies all the risks together. For instance, in the case of the DAO, loopholes allowed a user to drain the 70 million US dollar venture capital fund. And since the network was immutable and decentralized, it was hard to come up with consensus or respond soon enough to the attack. Also, long complex smart contracts may be difficult for leases as they usually work in a more adaptive and responsive manner. In this respect, Satoshi Vision SV, may provide an effective technical framework in tackling these issues. So SV is an approach to blockchain advocated by the Bitcoin SV community. SV's goal is to revise and restore the spirit of the original Bitcoin white paper published by Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So the word Bitcoin consists of bit and coin that implies a token economy where information becomes value that is quantifiable and represented by tokens, an economy where information is both the currency and the product. So Bitcoin is a form of specie money that creates value for its relative utility. The market pricing is a different thing that is of less concern to this presentation. Thus, Bitcoin has to be able to operate micropayment, so to account for the smallest value in information exchanges, while operational costs and transaction fees should be kept low. Peer-to-peer -peer is the process of dealing between one individual to another, where the network creates value through the act of transaction from person to person as opposed to person to market. 
So electronic. Electronic money is different from virtual money in that the former does not necessarily change the value of fiat currency, while the later can be denominated in its own units of value or with decentralized automatic issuance. This basically broadens the possibilities of public-private partnerships for Bitcoin where the system is technically distributed, but decentralization remains a question of design. On the other hand, electronic is a technology that, in economic terms, should help to build connectivity and organize tasks more efficiently as opposed to duplicating bureaucracy and creating more work. A cash system is for the purposes of accounting, which is the measurement, processing, and communication of financial information, where money should not be a standard of value, but a medium of exchange that acts as a measuring stick for value. So if the money is subject to extensive financial speculations, it will no longer be a viable medium of exchange, as individuals will lose their ability to plan budgets and gauge supply and demand accurately. Along these lines, an incentive framework is drafted for the design of a multi-access blockchain BIM system, which I call a SVBIM system. So SVBIM aims at helping to form consensus around an information object in a decentralized manner to which leases can contribute micro units of architectural information to accelerate peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. So contributing micro IPs such as proof of concept or minimal viable products to build common asset models and collaborative designs. Micro IP can be traded at multiple stages of a project to crowdfund and collect users' opinion for future developments. A micro-information economy where the pricing of micro-units of information facilitates instant rewards to content creators to assure their rights indirectly profiting from their work input. This helps micro-design challenges and information to progress into physical architecture by competing, evolving, and surviving in a natural property market. Also, SVBIM enables immediate transaction fees low operational cost, and micropayments to stimulate alternative forms of investments in the architectural market like crowdfunding, reverse auctions, etc. So it helps to secure investments by automating bundles of micro-agreements that can adapt to real-time data and fluctuations in projects, a halt and run mechanism. Basically, contracts can be modularized into smaller units that set along a development timeline where an individual unit halts to completion but collectively run continuously. This gives greater flexibility for long agreements to adapt to sudden changes and facilitates longer timeframes for decision making in case of errors and attacks. So basically, distributing centralized risks within an immutable complex contracts and one-off transactions. These investment and transaction models help to build up local industrial capacity and can be extended to architectural software design to overcome proprietary issues, forming an integratable app stack. So this helps to diversify design tools to facilitate more opportunities for cultural sensitivity in design. In this decentralized network, identities can be authenticated with architectural proof of work, where clients and users can collectively verify the authenticity and performance of leases using a digital registry in the CDE. This helps to hasten identity authentication, simplifies operations, and prevents the duplication of effort to improve connectivity in the network. So this is a tag stack proposed for SVBeam. It consists of six layers. The infrastructure layer comprises various compute, storage, and networking infrastructures. They communicate through the shared data layer, which is a digital ledger composed of the SV blockchain and the CDE of Beam. The ledger records transactions across the network, for instance, smart contracts, digital assets, content registries, rights management. The protocol layer is a set of shared specifications that connects to the APIs, which can be open sourced, like social and asset mapping protocols, or commercial, like certificate and communication protocols. So through the API gateway, all server outputs are communicated to serve an integratable app stack in the application layer. So each type of users, like leases, clients, and general users, can have specific available views and functionalities that are designed to their needs. For instance, Beam, WebGL for rendering 3D information, payment buttons, networking platforms, etc. 
So all applications are supported by an application model and a digital registry that turns registered content into profiles and portfolios. Beam applications interface the enforceability layer, which consists of IoT systems like GPS or RFID that execute material tracking. So how will an SVBeam system work in action? I have illustrated with five UML use cases, but for the limited length of this presentation, I will only go through one of them. Imagine a scenario where a junior architect Sam left his job to set up his own studio. Let's say Sam has little client base and projects from his previous company cannot be shared online due to confidential reasons. The SVB network provides a platform for Sam to accumulate proof of work and sustain cash flow. For instance, if Sam has a concept for collective housing based on Site X, he can create a proof of concept like a row resolution 3D model, concept diagram, and so on in the design interface and initiate a crowdfund. So the crowdfund can be divided into several stages. Each will give higher resolution to the design. So any users who appreciates the POC and wishes for it to be further developed can make micropayments by hitting the like button, commenting and sharing his post on a networking interface, for instance, a social media interface made specifically for general users. Sam can make statistical analysis on user opinion and attention and develop predictive models to be packaged with the POC for a reverse auction at a later stage. So throughout development stages, if Sam's POC loses popularity on the network, he will lose capital input, so it has to make sure that his design captures users' opinions. If the PLC successfully develops into a mature IP and turns a profit, users who've invested will be rewarded with micropayments. So what's the benefits of this for clients? An IP that has harnessed network effects can help clients to evaluate future yields. For instance, if a client Carol wishes to develop Site X, she can make a data retrieval on SVB and present a set of criteria by a query, for instance, site location, nature of the development, etc. Let's suppose the system returns Sam's PLC as a result. Kara can evaluate the design based on the volume of network effects, amount of crowdfund, mass of potential buyers, and predictive analysis. So should Carol decide to acquire the PLC, they can set up a peer-to-peer -peer agreement on the SV blockchain for Sam to fit the design on site X. So the project can be modulated by microagreements with timeframes that are bundled into an agreement block. So everything will be timestamped for authentication, including Sam's IP, the transaction, and so on, and can be visible on both of their digital portfolios. Meaning that not just clients can rate contractors, a mutual rating mechanism can help to protect the rights of contractors. So we are almost near the end of my presentation. I shall briefly sum it up. In the proposed SVBeam solution, blockchain serves as a universal protocol and infrastructure, whereas Beam serves as an interface for communication. So SVBeam ensures that all information is encrypted and timestamped, so to be transparent and traceable on the network. On the other hand, it facilitates micropayment to account for the smallest transactions. And this accelerates peer-to-peer -peer exchanges where content creators can be instantly rewarded and get feedbacks from their designs. Along these lines, SVBeam enables an information economy that facilitates a space of growth for both physical and intellectual properties. Thank you so much for your time. Please feel free to get in touch with me via email or social media. I'm on Instagram. You can find me at provides.ism. Thank you again for your attention. See you in the Q&A.